Um, but thank you for being here and, and, and sort of I'm aiming to give you a little bit of an insight into what we do at Thornhill Community Academy. When I arrived, that said, deputy head teacher, I thought I'd been demoted since I left school this morning. I've been in this morning, but thank goodness uh, nobody's taken a, a call from my boss to say I have been relegated. So um, I am Matthew Burton. I'm um, head teacher at Thornhill Community Academy, which is a school in Dewsbury in West Yorkshire, serving two very discreet communities. One particularly very white British working class community. We, this is, the actual school itself is, is located between two, um, two council estates and is a fantastic richness of, of culture from, from that area. But then actually we serve Thornalese and Saviltown, which are predominantly Muslim Asian area. And as a result of that, our, our, our sort of ethnic makeup of the school is around 50% white British, 50% Pakistani Muslim students, which means that students are exposed to, to actually what real life is. The impact we can have on people, what we do genuinely makes a difference to lives. It transforms lives and it's who we do it for, which is important. And I think it's sometimes really important to remember why we do it, because when we work in challenging areas with disadvantaged students, with the most vulnerable in the country, it's very, very important to remember why are we doing what we're doing? Why, are we why have we chosen to make that decision to go into education and make a difference? We do expect more and more and more and more and more every single year from every single student because there's more expected of us. and. What we have to remember is there are only six hours a day in which we can affect those things, even though there are 18 more. And if we think about the influences that, that young people and very the most vulnerable young people, specifically, having those 18 hours, they're not the most fantastic of, of, of influences. Excuse me. And our ability to buy in and to really catch on to the time that these young people have is, over the course of a secondary education, equated to about 19%. And if we push it to after school clubs and we push it to Easter school and all the rest of it, we might get 21, 22%. But actually, that's about as good as it's going to get. And we've really got to make sure that every single second counts. And that's what we try to do at Thornhill. Every second counts. We have really clear rules. Work hard and be nice. So what is the curriculum? And we all know about sort of the EBAC. We all know about bucket one, bucket two, bucket three. We all know about those words broad and balanced, which get pulled out at every single Ofsted inspection. But what do they want and what's going to get these young people up in the morning? How do we meet their aptitudes? How do we meet them halfway and make them have something that they actually want to have? Because what do those young people need and want? And what's the support and what's the scaffolding to help them climb those ladders? To make them have that big picture of college or university or employment or an apprenticeship or whatever it may be. But it's no good having that for the most vulnerable because Nobody in their family, quite regularly, has had those opportunities. So what is the scaffolding to put in place? What's the small picture that contributes to the bigger one further down the, further down the line? Where's the outlet? Where's that emotional support to give them the opportunity to vent? Back further, and this is what I've done with my leadership team at Thornhill. We've thought about what students want. And it's quite a broad church, really, of things they want. But we can pretty much summarise it in happiness, popularity, whether that's a like on Facebook, which no kids are on anymore because parents start to get on it. Or streaks on Snapchat. Does anybody know about streaks on Snapchat? It's because I'm mentally 15 years old, that's why. But they want popularity and they want success, of course they do. Whilst that may be covered over at times, they want that success. But we know as, as school leaders, we know as educationalists, there are things that they need. Outcomes, happiness, they need that safety and welfare because it isn't always apparent that those boundaries are in place for young people, they need to test those boundaries and we need to make sure that those boundaries are far enough back from the brink so that they are safe to push at. They need soft skills and they need experiences because the academic is going to get their foot in the door for that, that job in 25 years time that they want. But the stuff that's going to make sure that they get that job when they walk into that office is the ability to hold a conversation, is to shake a hand, is to have the ability to hold eye contact. It's things like that, those soft skills. And I heard recently that some of the most important uh, I think it's accountancy firms in the country are going to sort of blind, they're going to recruit qualifications blind and they're not going to look at qualifications and they're going to recruit purely around those sort of values, which I think is really interesting. And actually, it's, I mean, it's slightly terrifying because I, I assume there's some sort of vetting process to make sure these people have got a C in maths at least at GCSE. But actually, it shows that what business wants and what companies want and what the country needs and the world needs are just fantastic young people who are full of the right values.